Is this a schwannoma or is this a normal variant? Okay, great. Okay, the, uh, this patient, uh, this, these, are the, these are the two slides. Um, the patient has a soft tissue mass which is contiguous uh, with the jugular foramen and was otoscopically vascular, actually blue. Note the very well corticated bony margin, and this is crucial and very important. Diagnosis, normal variant, it's a dehiscent internal jugular vein. Uh, had this been a glomus jugulari, the uh, cortex around the uh, margin of the jugular foramen would have been eroded, uh, usually quite significantly. Um, we'll discuss those in a little while. I want to um, alert you to the, the fact that the jugular foramen may be large and are very often asymmetric, even markedly so. Uh, right is much more commonly large than the left. That's because the superior sagittal sinus preferentially drains into the right transverse sinus. That's why the right jugular vein is larger than the left, if, if indeed, most, most of the time, but not always. Okay, this is another uh, patient. Uh, do, do not confuse the normal asymmetry with the glomus jugulari. And uh, the key is the well-corticated bony margin. Okay, we're going to talk briefly about uh, a few cases, uh, differential diagnosis of middle ear masses, which are unassociated with chronic otitis. Uh, first is the congenital middle ear cholesteatoma, which we have an example of here. This is the most common primary middle ear mass. Uh, the mastoid is typically well pneumatized because these patients do not ordinarily have a history of chronic otitis. And they're otoscopically avascular, usually described as white or pearly. Uh, both congenital and acquired middle ear cholesteatomas are characterized uh, in, by MRI scan as they do not enhance with gadolinium. Uh, this is often gives, uh, if there's a question about a middle ear lesion, uh, often an MRI will be helpful for that very reason. Paragangliomas or glomus tympanicum tumors are the second most common primary middle ear mass and the most common primary middle ear tumor. Uh, these also are well pneumatized mastoid due to a lack of history of chronic otitis. Uh, they enhance uh, with gadolinium. Uh, they're otoscopically vascular, of course. There's an intense blush and angiography. They're usually supplied by the ascending pharyngeal. Uh, they often are uh, located on the surface of the promontory, but not always. And uh, they have signal voids if they're large enough. Uh, middle ear schwannoma is the third most common primary middle ear mass. Uh, well pneumatized mastoid typically. Uh, they uh, enhance with gadolinium. There's no blush at angiography. Uh, they're uh, otoscopically, av otoscopically avascular as well. Um, usually they arise from a branch of the facial nerve, and the best imaging clue is the proximity to the facial nerve, but middle ear schwannomas can also arise from Jacobson's nerve that we discussed, the chorda tympani, uh, or uh, Arnold's nerve. Differential diagnosis of middle ear mass is associated with chronic otitis. Of course, uh, no, t no lecture on the temporal bone would be complete without at least mentioning acquired cholesteatoma. Um, I think it's some kind of a law that you have to do that. Um, this is, uh, these are otoscopically avascular. There, is, there usually is a history of chronic otitis in a poorly pneumatized mastoid. There's uh, no gadolinium enhancement, as I mentioned. Uh, they're most commonly located in the attic. Uh, acquired cholesteatomas have predictable bone destruction. Uh, as we're, as you're, I'm sure you're all aware, the most uh, that uh, erosion of the scutum is especially common. On this side, we have an eroded scutum when compared to the normally, sh normally sharp scutum on the opposite side. Uh, there's typically erosion of the ossicular chain. In this case, the body of the incus is absent, or for the most part, absent. And uh, typically, um, advanced cholesteatomas uh, are associated with uh, lateral semicircular canal fistulae, and this uh, demonstrates some thinning and some erosion over the, of the cortex of the lateral semicircular canal. 